If we start with the high speed line, we know that we are building a lot of infrastructure all around the world. About a high speed rail, for example, we have very huge level of competition of, of infrastructure right now in terms of kilometer. Of course, China is by far the biggest country uh, for the high speed rail, but also in Europe, we made a lot of investment in Spain, especially France, Germany, but also in Italy. So what we have right now, that we have a good national networks in, in Europe, many times that kind of network is not well integrated, but many times we are too much focused on the, uh, especially on the um, infrastructure side and not in the regulation side. So let's go to the next. What are happening around the world right now? So as you can see here, of course, in Europe, we decide from last year to have a sort to start with the competition uh, inside the country with a four railway package. This is very, very important because Europe decide to go in the same direction, for example, of Italy, what we have in Italy in 2012, or in other country, as will be shown later by Nick Brooks. And this is very interesting because we have we will we have a competition, we will have more and more competition. On May, for example, we will have uh, the competition starting in Spain with the second operator. Next year, we will have the third operator in the high speed. And this is a very good uh, indication because, for example, the similar model also in South Korea, where it work, where since uh, right now four years and more, we have a second player that is not in competition with Korea, SRT is in competition with uh, Korea. Of course, this is one of uh, the design. Uh, of the competition. We have different, uh, completely different model. For example, think about uh, Japan, where we have a vertical integration between infrastructure manager and railway undertaking. But in Europe, we decide to go in this direction. This is very, very interesting because this is a model that we are expanding in Europe, but also in other countries. Let's go to the next slide, please. So what happened in Italy? In Italy, it was very clear what happened. Since 2012, when we started the competition, we saw a big growth of the demand in the high-speed rail. Uh, we have an increase of around 120% uh, since 2011. And this is very interesting because in Italy, in the same period, we have quite no more kilometers uh, in terms of high-speed rail network. So with the same network, we have 120% more demand. Thanks to the fact, that on average, we have a decrease of the yield or decrease of the price of the ticket around 35, 40%. And this is very, very interesting. As you can see here, you have two articles, uh, one from Bloomberg Business uh, uh, Week, uh, and the other one is from Reuters, where I discuss with the, with the, with the journalists about the fact that it's something that is happening in Italy that is very interesting and is coming also for Europe. And we will see effect since this year. So let's go to the next slide, please. And what is very, very interesting that uh, uh, we are in very difficult situation. So as you can see here is the traffic estimation due to the COVID-19. So this is very bad. We're in the worst scenario because as you can see, uh, for example, after a, a small recovery during the last summer, we saw finally, we saw finally a, a big uh, decrease in October, November 2020, and still we are very far away from recovery. So what is good, the Italian government decided to intervene to help the rail undertaking and the infrastructure manager with a reduction of access charge, for example. And this is very important to be extended also for all 2021, because this reduction of access charge could help the rail sector to coming back. Let's go to the next slide, please. So what happened in Italy, that we have also a benefits on the environmental aspect. So we saw this model shift from aviation and car to the rail, not only thanks to the high-speed rail. Here you can see the high-speed rail in 2008 model share was around 36%. In 2008, the line was between Milan and Rome was still not completed. In 2012, yes, we have the line completed. And, and you can see that the high-speed rail was the already the majority. But the big difference was made thanks to the competition due, due to the fact of the decrease of the price. And in 2018, 2019, we had around 80% of the model share between Milan and Rome with the rail. And this has an impact on the environment. I made some studies. Uh, I teach also in several universities and for the university, I made some studies that we show as even if we increase the number of the passenger, we decrease the impact on the environment thanks to the fact that the rail is much more, uh, uh, much more efficient in terms of environment and CO2 emission. Let's go to the next. And uh, 
still, even if we had a, a very good development in, in Italy, for example, in Europe, we have still some problem. If we see here is the passenger rail model share in Europe, we can see that in the last 30 years, 25 years, more or less, we have the same model share. This is, this is for Europe. And this is create for me big problem because we made a lot of investment, but still we don't see the results. So the problem, of course, is not just infrastructure and not only economic regulation. Of course, we need to help with economic regulation to have a good market. But still, we have technical regulation that is a barrier. We saw in many cases that even if in theory the market is open, we don't have competitors enter in that because that we have a high entry barrier on that and not is not existing yet a real single European area. And this is a big problem because if we are not able to create a competition at European level, we will not see the benefits of the competition to all the players. So let's go to the next. And when we saw the private uh, operator, we saw that entering the market in open access competition, we saw that uh, this kind of operator, apart, you know, some uh, fixed costs that are fixed by, by uh, tariff and so on, uh, for the use, the access charge and so on, but we saw that is, the private operator are able to reduce the cost. We have operational costs that start to decrease a lot. Of course, we is not just in terms of cost, that we have to think about that is important, but also the effectiveness of railway corridors that we have to create. And also we have to solve the infrastructure bottleneck. Let's go to the next slide, please. Yeah, and uh, we have really to think about the access charge because right now is one of the uh, main costs for the railway operator, also for the international connection. We have to think that the part is linked to the rider cost and part is linked to the markup. In Italy for the, uh, COVID-19 crisis, we decide to cancel or to decrease the markup part so we can see a better recovery of the rail sector. But we have to think about this for the long period. Let's go to the last slide. And if we are able to reduce the cost in general, so the access charge could go from 0% in China where the railway company didn't pay the infrastructure charge to 60% as we have, for example, in Spain right now for the high-speed rail operator, uh, we have to think that the rail, the high-speed rail could be very competitive because we have the reduction of operation expense, uh, ex expensive uh, in terms of maintenance contract that is made different, the optimization of the space on board, the running cost is reduced, the IT cost is reduced. So finally, as you can see here, if we take the cost for available seat kilometers, Italo, that is a private company, is able to have a lower cost for available seat kilometer of many low cost airlines, willing easy jet, as you can see here. So we can expand the use of high speed rail thanks to the competition. 